My name is Sabrina Shaw, and I'm a grade 12 student from Canada. My essential question for the capstone project is, how can food give strength and relax exhausted individuals? I want to show that food has the possibility to turn a bad day into a day that's even a bit better. Food can improve our mood and motivate us to continue our busy lives. Although I understand that food cannot completely solve our problems, it can still present as a good support and help us overcome adversities in our daily lives. The two main goals of my capstone project are to discuss the influence food has on our physical health, the chemical aspect, and our mental well-being, the psychological aspect, and how it can help enhance our mood with healthy food habits. And introduce many simple drinks and desserts recipes that can be easily made with ingredients found in a regular Canadian home. For my capstone project, I decided that a YouTube channel would be the most simple and the most easily accessible tool to connect with my audience. In this YouTube channel, I want to feature videos of all my recipes, my research regarding the science behind what foods are recommended to eat, in regards to mood, and which foods should be avoided, and much more. I frequently use YouTube to find interesting recipes to make, so I thought to myself, why don't I create my own channel? My initial planned project was an online PDF cookbook. However, there are a few points that made me reconsider this idea, such that I would not be able to update the recipe book after it is published, and that I would not have a lot of exposure to a large audience. Therefore, with the YouTube channel, I will not need to consider how many recipes should be in the cookbook is I can keep adding my creations and videos, even after the completion of Capstone. Further ahead, YouTube is commonly used by a huge range of age groups and appears on Google search results under the video tab, which will give my videos more exposure. Therefore, I have decided to change my final project to video creations on my YouTube channel. A lot of my mother's relatives work in the food industry or have a lot of experience with food service. My mother is also an extraordinary chef and since childhood, I was exposed to a variety of foods. From there, I had been taught the importance of food as well as its influence on individuals. I became even more interested in foods within the last two years. In particular, during the pandemic, I was put under a lot of stress and fatigue from school, extracurriculars, and my social life. During these times, the person who has helped me pull through and feel at ease during these endless days was none other than my mom. She would prepare me a hot, comforting drink, such as English tea, hot chocolate, matcha, you name it. She also occasionally made me some snacks. Her little gestures of support inspired me to learn more about the foods and nutrition field, especially as a form of encouragement. Additionally, for the rest of this presentation, as you can already see, I will be showing my process video of baking cracked chocolate cookies for Mother's Day while I present my capstone project. I want to give back to my mother for not only being the coolest and supportive mom, but also for being the catalyst who ignited my interest in foods and the ways it can help other people. The main focus of my capstone project is to search for how I can give strength to individuals and be with them during difficult times. I desire to help others and sympathize with them in domains of knowledge that I am interested in. My sub goal has been for me to improve my cooking by receiving feedback from my audience 
and further practicing certain recipes. I first gathered information on the psychology of why food is so well loved by people of different parts of the world, including personal food preferences, and how cultures can affect our feelings towards food. There are factors such as different attitudes regarding food from different cultures. My essential question at this time was, how can we make recipes that are satisfying for exhausted individuals after a long day? In my second learning log, I decided to change my essential question to a more broad and pertinent question that can further accurately describe the main goals of my capstone project. How can foods comfort exhausted individuals? I wanted to convey a feeling of comfort rather than simply finding foods that are delicious and popular. I also researched about the chemical aspect of how foods can help relax and ease an individual's mind, and which types of food, such as soda or overconsumption of sugars, should be avoided to prevent exaggerated, huge waves of emotions and feelings of illness. By experiencing abstract emotions, people can also have shifting perceptions and encounter additional negative emotions. I also looked up information about anxiety and depression to understand the symptoms and feelings of a person feeling overwhelmed. I had created a survey and asked students about their personal experience with their hardships and their ways of attempting to overcome their feelings and adversities. This survey was used as the experimental aspect of how foods influence mood and overall served as an experimental answer to my why questions in the second log. After comparing the results from this survey with my notes on the chemical aspects for my second log, I decided to try six recipes, which consisted of three desserts and three drinks, to experiment with and observe how simple they are to make, as well as if they are made with easily accessible and available ingredients. I would later decide if it is something I would recommend to cook for individuals who are busy and stressed. During my fifth and sixth log, I made adjustments to certain recipes and added and discarded a few other recipes. Referring to advice from my capstone teacher, I planned an event where I would create food at school and distribute them to school staff. Unfortunately, the COVID regulations became more strict, so I had to toss this idea out of the window. I became stuck on what else I could add to my capstone project that would give some insight and conclude all that I've been researching. In my final log, I decided to make a YouTube channel as well as change my essential question to the current one. The pandemic was definitely one of the biggest challenges I had to face while I was working on my capstone project. Food has strict regulations, consequently, I wasn't allowed to share handmade foods even if they were whipped up at school. I was left with the cookbook idea, but I didn't consider it as appealing as a food distribution event. Additionally, I was having second thoughts on the purpose of my question. For instance, what does comfort even look like? How can my project really reach out to the world? And how can I provide more opportunities of comfort for people from different backgrounds? Sometimes the word comfort didn't seem absolutely correct for my message either. My objective was simply how I can connect and relate to my audience. Moreover, I realized that a website or a social media platform could expand to a bigger audience than a PDF book. I considered creating a TikTok account or website, and while I was writing out the pros and cons, I became aware that my main source for recipes are all on YouTube. This is why I decided to create a YouTube channel as my capstone project. The research regarding the chemical aspect of the influence of food and the survey concerning people's experiences of food helped me decide what recipes would be ideal and fitting to the target population. 
I believe all the topics I researched about would complement each other as an informative video. For example, what factors influence the impact foods have on us? What foods should be avoided when I'm feeling anxious? The most interesting point I learned was that taste isn't the only sense that determines the flavor of food. It's all the five senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing, that contribute to creating the perception of how a food tastes at that moment in time. For example, if you couldn't smell durian fruit, you would not have a pre-existing negative image of how the fruit may taste. Recently, I tried durian in my food class, and I noticed that the fruit itself doesn't taste as gross as I thought it would. It was pretty sweet despite the mushiness, but the overwhelming foul smell of durian strangled my nose rolls tight and I had to inhale the fruit. Creating a survey for members of my community to use was a helpful resource for me as it could give me ideas and confirm specific facts from my theoretical research. One of the questions I asked in my survey was about what foods individuals consume to relieve their stress, and most responses mentioned eating chocolate. As a matter of fact, dark chocolate affects the levels of brain endorphins, which fight pain and stress in the brain. It also contains flavanols, which are antioxidants that may benefit brain function. This increases serotonin levels, which is a mood stabilizer that regulates anxiety. I want to explore more of the psychological aspect of the influence of food and how we can manipulate food. I enjoy understanding logical ideas that feel like a puzzle piece, in particular, the example of describing how we create the flavor of food with all five senses of the body. I am also very interested in how we can manipulate food characteristics to create a certain image. For example, you can make a drink taste more like berries just by simply making it look like a deeper, more intense color of red. I strongly recommend researching many topics about food and understanding what aspects you are interested in, rather than trying to cover every single topic you think of. After completing my capstone project, I realized that it would have been easier to have a more detailed idea to work with. Thank you for tuning in to my capsule presentation showcase. See you next time.